Hello and welcome to our webinar entitled Open Sciences Across Geographies Speaker Series with our Chinese Open Science Network, or COSN. Uh, my name is Daniel Steger. I am the Technical Community Manager here for the Center for Open Science. I'm joined today by members from the Chinese Open Science Network and their esteemed experts on open science for Chinese researchers. The goal of this webinar is to provide insights into open science or what open science is like for Chinese researchers, both in English and then again in Chinese. Uh, this webinar will be the first of two webinars. The second webinar will be held on Saturday, June 17th at 1800 Eastern Time. Uh, it will contain the same presentation, but it'll be hosted entirely in Chinese. Quick introduction. Uh, the Center for Open Science is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting open science practices in research. Uh, as part of COS's theory of change, uh, we have efforts and programming striving to make lasting changes in open science practices, all the way from the government and policy levels to uh, our research platform, the Open Science Framework, the OSF. Is that this time, I'd like to turn it over to my co-host, Dr. Yu Fang Yang, uh, who will introduce the format of this webinar. Hi, um, I'm Yu Fang Yang, so uh, welcome everyone. So this is approximately 30 minutes webinar that will cover the following to uh, talking points. So we have a seven minutes talk on introduction to Chinese Open Science Network by Dr. Ching or Vincent Wang. Then we will have a seven minute talk on open science perspective on Chinese researcher in published by Dr. Uh, Qin Nanzhou. And finally, we'll have then a seven minute talk by Yu Wei Gao on the open science from the government and policy perspective. And then lastly, we will end with a question and answer Q and A sessions. So please add the question into the chat and we will select the questions to our speakers during the Q&A sessions. And at this point, I would like to turn it over to our first speaker, uh, Dr. Wang. So um, thank you, Dr. Wang. So do you want to get started for your first talk? Uh, thank you, Yuho. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, can you hear me? No? Yes, we can hear oh. you. Perfect. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, thank you for the uh, invitation. And I'm very uh, honored to be here uh, to give a small introduction on Chinese Open Science Network uh, on behalf of COSN. So let's get started. So when we're looking at the uh, open science community, we have a lot of like uh, open science organizations like Reproducibility Network, Reproducibility, or and Open Science Grassroots Networks. We also have like large organizations of uh, open science organizations like we have uh, ambassadors uh, of Center for Open Science, and we have a lot of members there. When we're looking at the uh, where do they come from, most of the time what we say is that developed countries, the like U.S., the European countries like Germany, uh, U.K and also Canada and Australia, but we uh, we seldom see any like uh, uh, developing countries, especially the countries from uh, Latin American, from, from e uh, uh, Eastern world, or even from like uh, North Africa. So here is a, just a summary of uh, the, uh, the nationality of uh, the open science uh, organizations. So if you would like to see where China is, I, I put the border of the of China in uh, uh, in the uh, yellow color, so we can see, only say like in, in the small corner, uh, China uh, China appears in a uh, ambassador of a uh, center for open science. For the member states, nothing, and uh, for uh, reproducibility network, still nothing. So, so what we see from here is currently uh, currently the uh, the open science communities are mainly. Uh, get the contributions from the the, the Western educated or or, or the uh, develop developed countries. We are still need more like contributions from the developing world. So that's uh that's why we are uh we are trying to build the build a uh, build the Chinese uh open science network uh, from grassroots to uh uh 
to to give more voice to the uh, to the open science world uh, world that uh, uh, even with a lot of limitations in developing countries, we're lacking of funding, we're lacking of a uh, uh, lacking of a lot of a lot of support uh, support from from the government and from all uh, from everywhere. But we are still trying to uh, to spread the word that open science is is the right way to do science. So let's look at how we uh, how we grow up. So since the very early paper uh, about the reproducibility crisis, especially the uh, science paper in 2015. Uh, it's uh, all researchers, especially in, uh, in in psychology, are really astonished because we are really not not able to to reproduce our previous research results. It's it's really uh, it's 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 really bad. So everybody is, uh, is astonished, and uh, among them, one person, uh, one person called Hu Chuanpen, who is a who is uh, who is a PhD student in China, and and he, he believes this is a very important message, and he just uh, 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 he, he just writes a Chinese version, Chinese paper describing the the reproducibility crisis and open science and, and all the concepts, and introduce introduce open uh, uh, open uh, introduce the open science to the Chinese community, and the, a screenshot of the paper is on the right corner of this uh, this slide. After that, we started organizing a small workshops. It's just like 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 a, a small workshop organized by two or three or um, like like ten students who are interested in open science, uh, who are who are really curious about how to do better science. And we successfully uh, have our first offline webinar in uh, Xi'an uh, in two thousand and sixteen. After that, we believe that we are really we really need. To uh, spread the word to to the whole Chinese community, and uh, we 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 start we we start in our WeChat uh, official account. WeChat is a uh, a mobile app. It's it's like tweet, the combination of WhatsApp and uh, Twitter and uh, uh, Facebook. You can have ha have you, all your contacts in the list. You can create groups. You can also share uh, photos or documents. All, all, a lot of other like shared, uh, a lot of other posts like short Twitter. Uh, you can share share all these all these media uh, with your friends and in the groups. So that's uh, that's what we uh, most of Chinese people use for like instant messi uh, messaging. So after that, we start to think think about about the things we can do to to pr really promote open science. So we started with uh, doing translation. So, uh, so we, know, we we already saw that there are a lot of interesting papers regarding open science. For example, the uh, the 2015 uh, reproducibility crisis paper. We started translating these papers and made, translated it into Chinese and uh, and and create a create a post. It's just like create a Twitter content with the translation and and share it with all the Chinese students and and the the Chinese P, PIs and. And gradually, we we started to organize our uh, second second offline workshop, and then the third third one. So until 2019, it, it, the epidemic came. We're locked down. We're not no longer able to organize offline or on-site uh, workshops, and we have to meet uh, virtually. And I joined CLS since then uh, because be, be, before ep epidemic, the, the main things we're we're doing is is like first translate the important paper regarding open science into Chinese, and the second thing is that we are organizing like journal clubs. We we find find good paper and we share the shared perspectives and and uh, among among the uh, CLS members. So since the epidemic came, and we are we, we we need to to organize all these events online, and we started to think why not. Organize a little bit more events like the tutorials because you know the the reproducibility part of, part of the reason for the reproducibility crisis is the um, the uh, the wrong way of using statistical methods and wrong way of interpreting this uh, this results. So we started by 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 organizing tutorials related to like power analysis and Bayesian uh, methods and. Uh, 
And then when we, we extend these tutorials to the most recent events in a, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, in a, like neural imaging methods and also the EEG and MEG methods and two boxes. And the, and the, the third thing we, we, were, uh, we have been doing uh, is open talks. We are inviting the, the authors from the, like, from the mo most recent and ha uh, hated papers, like the most recent paper in, uh, uh, uh about the, uh, uh, about, uh, most recent paper about the uh, like chi uh, Chinese version of a human connectome project. We invited the, uh, the first author and they, they, they give us the introduction about how they collect the data, how they make the protocol, and how they're going to share their data. That's uh, attracted a lot of uh, interest from all the like er uh, students and also the early career re researchers. And apart from all these like formal academic events, we are also organizing a very like, uh, Carol events. So, uh, it's it's mainly like we we make these these events uh, uh, mainly like on the holidays. For example, we are organizing the uh, like a Christmas event. We call it the Open Plus. It's we are inviting the um, the people who moved from from industry to uh, uh, academia, and also some people and also some professors from from academia to industry, and and uh, we are inviting them to share their ideas why they are moving from one. One area to to the other, and what 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 are their suggestions for for our students and for for the postdocs? And until 2021, we we have our uh, first uh, like uh, uh, steering co committee meeting because for, uh, before that we are we're mainly like working uh, working in one WeChat group. We organize everything together. Everybody is involved, and every, we we don't have a like clear. Uh, responsibility for for everyone. We do things together. It's just like disorganized. But with the accumulation of a more uh, uh, more more events and the more uh, things, uh, more people to manage, we need we need need a better like optimized uh, administration structure. So until the uh, until the uh, the early of this year, we are having two. Uh, uh, 23,000 sub subscribers. I've checked this number like several days ago. It's now we are having uh, twenty five thousand sub sub subscribers in uh, in our uh, like official WeChat group. We also have our uh, Twitter account to like broadcast our uh, act, uh, events uh, activities and 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 some so sometimes like re recruiting uh, uh, PhD students and these sort of things. So uh, we 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 record most of our activities and share the uh, recordings while another like streaming platform is called the Bilibili. It's uh, because this platform allows us to uh, share all these videos without forcing uh, people to watch their advertisements. So, okay, uh, yeah. Then, then, then this is our current current uh, uh, structure. So this is an example of uh, how we make the post, and uh, th th this is the social media we're using. And uh, th this is the, the number of reads for our event posts. And uh, th these are numbers we uh, lo 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 activities we've all, we have organized. So the most re uh, most uh, uh, most uh, read uh, open talks uh, open transfer. Is is red and the one is a face stimulus and two classes. That's the translation of the resources regarding like face, how to make face stimul, stimul, uh, st st stimulation like uh, programs and the tools you can use for for uh, for that purposes. And uh, here are the, uh, some other interesting thing like this is a p value ci and power. This is about this is here in our open minds and uh, uh, etc. So so. Th the experiences we learned from like building COSN from a small like special interest group is that so first of all be bold and optimistic even though we are facing a lot of uh, like challenges and barriers uh, we are lacking of funding we are lacking of support but be bold and optimistic we can always seek uh, seek help from other uh, from other like from the other uh, open science uh, organizations and also be connected always ask uh, ask help from other Open science organizations and uh, for the person who is really a uh, photo of uh, like promoting open science, they're gonna definitely help you. And be practical. This is important because we we need to make make sure that our uh, the the academic activities 
And all these events are really helpful for our uh, for, for our uh, audience. And be visible, trying to like uh, make uh, try uh, try to put your contributions uh, and uh, make everything documented and recorded. And that's gonna be uh, be like one at least it's, it's one line of your uh, uh, it's one 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 line in your uh, your CV, which is like it says you you really done something to uh, make makes the makes research better. So be affordable and be local. This is important because. You need to balance the time you spend on 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 promoting open science and also the time you spend on your real uh, your real research and this is important. Uh, and uh, the sale essence next plan is continuing our support for the Chinese speaking community uh, to increase open science and make contribution to the international communities. Like we work, we can work with uh, COS to like to do some translations and to to transport the. The, the knowledge from from the Chinese Chinese language to the English language and also from the from from the international open science science world to the Chinese community and uh, we we are optimizing our current organization uh, organize uh, organize uh, organizational structure to uh to to survive better because we really need to balance the time especially when when uh when this when most of us just uh, went from phd or master student to early career researchers we need to to manage a lot of things at the same time and we, we're going to continue improving our open science events like the open four plus events and uh, where we need to organize and uh, manage now the materials we already created and make them more ac uh, more easily accessible to our audience and uh, we we plan to support like regional uh, regional wise grassroots networks uh, within and outside of China. So if you're you would like to build build your local uh, uh, open science networks, we are happy to help always. So and uh, one important thing is since COIC has grown uh, has grown, so we are trying to find our best to to help help to not only like promote open science but also really help the the reason charts to do better science. So we're trying to to work with other uh, uh, open science organizations like uh, uh, Brinhead, OFBM Brinhead, Brinhead, and all the other, uh, some other um, open science, uh, open science organizations to, be, uh, to, to organize like like the hackathons and all, all these sort of events. And uh, we are happy to reach out uh, to other like open science organizations to apply for the financial support of our fund together to to make uh, life easier for 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 the open uh, for, for for open science. So, uh, so still we are we need to, to do a lot of things to make the to cultivate the open science research environment. Uh, for example, we are uh, we really need the help from the like from the top uh, top level of a uh, 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 top level of uh, like for, from the government and from the funding agency, and also from the uh, pub publishing companies, we need the support from them. And also, we um, uh, we, we we need to remember that uh, developing countries and developed countries are different, and also we we, we should we should really bridge the gap between between all these differences, in, including the uh, including. Uh, promoting like equality, diversity, and uh, global open science, and also uh, the researchers we encourage, we encourage the researchers from developing countries and uh, especially the under uh, represented groups make wise themselves, and uh, we're always help uh, we're always ready to help. And uh, what we do here uh, with everyone together is to pass on the spirit of open science to the students and to the ECRs so that we're having having a real open science uh, 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 future. So thank you for, for, for your time. So it's a bit. Thank, yeah, thanks for, for the great <laughs> talk, Dr. Wang. So don't forget to, if you have any question, feel free to add into the q and eight and just let you know today's session will be running now. So we actually, the webinars recorded, so uh, we will post this later if you cannot stay longer. So uh, last, we last welcome for our next speaker, uh, Dr. Zhou is going to talk about 
the open science perspective for Chinese research in publish. So the virtual floor is yours now. Thank you very much for the introduction, Yifan. So I try to share my screen. Um, okay. Look at this one. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, but we also see the um, the sub slide. Do you want to be uh, present in full screen? Sure. Now, How about perfect. now. Perfect. Yeah, looks good. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so, uh, hello, everyone. So, so I will spend uh, seven minutes to talk about the. Uh, Publishing uh, you know, uh, in 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 China uh, about uh, so about the things related to open science. Uh, so I'm really uh, excited to see this uh, event happen. Uh, you know, the uh, try to uh, uh, remove the uh, barriers between uh, different uh, languages, and also um, I'm the uh, editor associate editor from the uh, uh, one top journal of uh, 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 a Chinese journals uh, named Science Splitting. Um, so, uh, in the first issue of this year, uh, there's a uh, message from the editor in chief uh, uh, calling open science to support global sus uh, sustainable development. And also, uh, uh, by the way, I am a senior from Beijing Normal, and uh, so I, uh, I'm a neuroscientist. Uh, uh, focus on human brain mapping. So I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, open science perspective uh, for Chinese researchers in publishing. Uh, uh, remember, I only make a very small point here. And uh, uh, so uh, by focusing on the neuroscience, uh, I will focus on three uh, cohorts in China. and. Uh, to uh, to highlight the point I want to make about the publishing. Uh, the first, so the first one is what we call it, a Chinese colonist project uh, for uh, lifespan development of brain and mind. And the second one we call Chinese human connector project. And uh, the, the third one is, you know, Chinese imaging genetics project. Uh, so in the first year, uh, in the first year of nature neuroscience this year, I think uh, they pro uh, it proposed uh, a is about the exclusive human neuroimaging methods uh, to highlight the need to increase the diversity of uh, you know, uh, diversity of subjects all uh, from the uh, neuroimaging community, and also uh, Winston just mentioned the. Uh, uh, the uh, a weird sample of things. Uh, actually, this is all recognized by the uh, new meeting field very earlier. Uh, so the first project uh, is we all know the uh, project that proposed in two thousand nine um, uh, by NIH uh, called the Human Connector Project. Um, and uh, you know, in next year, uh, last year we published a uh, one one paper to uh, pronounce uh, to announce the uh, Chinese Human Connected Project by using almost the uh, identical uh, protocol, uh, you know, uh, with with HCP, and then we can see the uh, you know from the population. Uh, for the uh, cortical, uh, for the cortical uh, sheet, and then uh, those uh, those populations are uh, are largely uh, you know identical, and uh, uh, and but also if you look, look into those uh, you know culture related or language related, uh, even for large scale uh, networks, uh, there are still there are still differences between the two cohorts. 
So another one is <clears throat> another one is with uh, the uh, Chinese Imaging Genetics Project, and this one is a very big uh, uh, project, uh, and also now all the data already are uh, uh, already collected and will be published uh, a lot of papers. Uh, but I, I I'm sure it's not not all all these all all over the researchers know this this resource and then. Uh, we can see here we published these pa these papers in English, and then also you know for for these for the names for the uh, the contents of the uh, uh, papers are all in English, and that that's a problem that's a great problem for uh, for Chinese researchers. I mean, you know, most Chinese researchers, um, I mean, they read Chinese much easier than so my. The point I want to make is about, um, so for my own team, I always thinking about uh, why not we publish in both English and Chinese for the same thing. And then, uh, for example, I I published, uh, with, with my team members published the Chinese colonist project um, in English and then but of course, we published in Chinese first. This is this is you know five five way ahead of the English paper, and we already published in Chinese. And then I know most most uh, you know you foreign guys very very difficult to read this, and then but and it is much easier for for us. And then so my point here is. Is there any way for open science community to push forward the publisher even or other there's another way or resource or platform to publish uh, the same thing, uh, the same scientific contents in multiple languages? So this is the one I I want to push forward, push the uh, publisher to do is we write this, we try to write the uh, the papers in both languages and then to ask the publishers such like as nature scientific data to publish it in both and i don't know we are we are still uh, discussing about this with the uh, with nature uh, but at least now we push them to publish these names in both english and chinese and then to recognize and then so I, I, I'm not very sure about this, but for me, for open science, from a more open science perspective, we should, uh, by, should, we should by using this, um, uh, this new culture to, uh, to push these, uh, things in publishing. So my, the take home message is about how open science can help break down the language barriers. In publishing, the point is very small. I, I already made, so thank you very much. Thank you so much for a very great talk. Just to remind everyone, sorry today a bit longer than we expected. We are very passionate about the topic uh, we present. So I'll uh, just let you know that the session is recorded and just put your question there. We will try our best to select the question in the end. So that's where kind of the next uh, speaker, Dr. Gao, talk about open science from the government and policy perspective. So uh, please share your screen if you are ready. Wait a minute. Okay. Great, yes. Yes, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay, here um, you go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, uh, good evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm so uh, grateful for the uh, opportunity to make a pod here. I'm Gao Yuwei from the uh, Computer Network Information Center of KAIS, um, mainly engaged in scientific data uh, management and sharing uh, research. Today I will introduce 
uh, certificate data, data and uh, open science in China uh, from a policy and uh, a practical um, a perspective. Uh, I will share uh, share uh, some information and the uh, viewpoints points on um, based on uh, public information and my work. Uh, the first one I will uh, introduce the policy uh, for scientific data and uh, open science in China. In my opinion, and uh, openness is one of the essential uh, attributes of science and um, present. Open science has uh, researched a uh, global um, cons uh, <coughs> consensus and a uh, global open science uh, uh, govern governance uh, needs China's uh, participation. Uh, and some, uh, I, uh, I think uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, policy and uh, you will uh, know. Um, some Chinese scholars have, are also um, carrying out um, comparative research on scientific data management policies, including academic <coughs> uh, Wei Yang. Um, I think the pace of uh, scientific data management policy development in China has greatly uh, accelerated in research years. Uh, from uh, the uh, graph, it can be seen can be seen that China's uh, data management uh, policy began began uh, to be released in 2018 and reached reached its peak. Um, that year. And uh, in, re in, re in re recent years, uh, China has uh, introduced uh, uh, a series and uh, develop, developed a, a series of data or uh, scientific data management measures. Uh, um, um, and uh, uh, also, uh, this one uh, and uh, uh, incorporate uh, data into production. Factors um, promote uh, circulation and lay a, a theoretical foundation for its open sharing. And uh, the uh, first uh, important and uh, uh, in other words, I, we, we can say the most important uh, policy is the first national uh, scientific data management measures, and, and its name. And its name is the Merits for the Management of Scientific Data. It, is, it was uh, drafted by the uh, Ministry of Science and Techn Techn Technology, <clears throat> formally in, uh, issued by the uh, General Office of the State uh, con Council on March uh, uh, 17, um, 2018, um, which uh, ex ex established the, the a guideline for China's scientific data work. And also um, the measures are for the management and the open sharing of scientific data in case was formally issued by the uh, GOO case on February 19, 2019. And uh, there is uh, eight uh, chapters on the uh, 36 articles in our uh, the, this po policy. Um, because the uh, time limit, I uh, only uh, introduce uh, some of his, his uh, important things. Um, the, in this uh, policy, uh, he, the key issue is the scientific data center. Mm, because the scientific data uh, center is the key to ensuring the uh, sustainable uh, development of scientific data. So in the uh, policy, three types of uh, scientific data, uh, data centers are uh, defined. And they, are, they are the chief center, uh, this, this discipline data center and the institution data center. And the second uh, point, we I will introduce the, uh, some practices <coughs> practices of uh, scientific data and the open science in China. Mm, yeah, in my opinion, uh, in order to 
uh, implement uh, policies for the data management, China in re released uh, 20 national data centers as the uh, pilot to improve the uh, data opening and the sharing activity. These uh, data centers cover the fields of physical uh, bioscience, uh, earthquake, and so on. And uh, I oh, works. I, I work uh, at the national base uh, science data center. Um, in other um, some uh, in other point and uh, activities. Uh, in recent years, Zhong Guanchun uh, Forum uh, have supported some open science uh, protests in China, um, and uh, uh, such as the International Innovation uh, Alliance for Open Science was as established, and the Beijing uh, in the in 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 the in their ter time to for open science protests was issued. Scientific data and open science uh, was held this year. Uh, and uh, this is also a picture. And in 2022, uh, academic uh, department of CAI, the, the CAS uh, launched the advisory review uh, problem project research on the uh, trends, trends and the impact of open science and all the, uh, uh, all the so many, the uh, academies, uh, deputy directors, uh, they, they uh, take part in the, this project, and the uh, project is on, on is uh, on the research. And uh, uh, and the and in uh, stand, standards, and China is keeping on establishing scientific data based uh, stand, <coughs> standardization. Uh, architecture, uh, as well as the um, guidelines to uh, lower the gap in data management. And uh, uh, I uh, look up the information from the uh, website, uh, publications uh, authored by National Science and the Technology uh, Infrastructure uh, Plasma for uh, platform uh, center and by uh, professionals uh, have officials released in uh, research, re recent years. Uh, in these uh, studies, the uh, pro uh, progress and the challenges of open sharing and the scientific data have been discovered. And uh, in other uh, practice uh, for uh, the case, a long-term mission uh, started uh, in 1986, which founded by CAS. Um, and uh, now we uh, we are we are uh, we are uh, establishing a scientific data center of CAS. Um, based on the 40 years scientific data work and the three years uh, data centers development. CAS has formed a scientific data central network consisting of one chief data center, um, 80, 18 uh, dis uh, discipline data, data center and uh, 60, uh, 16 <coughs> in uh, institutional data center. And also, uh, data uh, paper and the release, uh, re related data are encouraged to publish on uh, data journals and the data report, uh, repositories, uh, such as we established the uh, Science Data Bank. Uh, the second uh, point I want to uh, share in the, some work about uh, National Base uh, Science Data Center. And during the uh, designing and the development of the uh, NBSDC uh, platform, we uh, fully uh, complied with the FAIR uh, principle and uh, implementation uh, ideas to related uh, open uh, science. Um, 
such as uh, including the uh, data policy and uh, uh, some the uh, PID. Uh, also, we uh, NBSDC has taken uh, taken the lead and uh, participated in developing um, twenty three national standards and the develop a certificate data, data center standard system is on the list. Um, at the last, um, NBSDC uh, also held uh, so, uh, some workshops on cutting edge uh, issues, uh, such as uh, the data ethics in the area of data uh, economy uh, and the uh, uh, challenges of open uh, sharing of sensitive data in China, uh, and uh, also uh, including the issue about open science and so on. Um, finally, uh, I hope uh, we can make uh, progress uh, to uh, promoting the open science and the sensitive data and together in the future. That's all. Um, the I want all the things I want to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to all of our speakers. Um, I saw a couple of mentions in the chat of wanting the uh, speakers' presentations, the slides. Um, we're going to collect those from our speakers and we will send that out in the email that'll go out hopefully later today. Um, now it's time for our Q&A session, uh, which is our chance to hear from our audience. Uh, obviously, we are a little bit over on time. So uh, what we've done is we've collected all of the questions that came in in the chat um, and come in through our Q&A session. Uh, we're going to pick one to talk about now, uh, but we're going to continue the conversation on some of our different uh, social media platforms, both for the COSN and for the Center for Open Science. Uh, that way that we can continue the conversation, um, even though we are a little over on time now. But again, uh, the session will be recorded and sent out. Um, so if you do have to leave, that is okay. I appreciate everyone that has stuck around for us. Uh, our first and really only question that we're going to answer today uh, is, how do Chinese researchers receive the benefits and challenges of adopting open science practices? Um, I believe Vincent, you had mentioned in our little document here that you might want to take the first uh, attempt at this one. Uh, yeah, so basically I just uh, uh, just finished my postdoc from uh, MNI, joined the in Shanghai Mental Health Center. So it's a hospital, uh, a university affiliated hospital. So basically here I, I've been really talking to a lot of uh, clinicians and the doctors here. And they, they are doing their research. They're very interested in improve, imp, improving their uh, quality of research. And they are happy to like to, to use better methods and to do things more rigorously and to manage, man, manage their data properly. But it really needs a lot of efforts, uh, which, is, which really is not their ex, uh, expertise. But they also have very heavy burden of like, they need to do a lot of clinical work. They don't have enough time to like to organize that, their data and to uh, to check all the methods again, again, again because it's it's too difficult for them. So so they really would like to like embrace open science, but they really really need need help. Like need help from the uh, informatics uh, group. Need the help from the uh, like the uh, statisticians uh, stati uh, statisticians and need the help from. The, the 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 people who are really doing open science research, so that is how how the 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 clinical uh stuff all the doctors see uh, open science. When we we're when I was trying to talk to the like the hospital uh chair, and they're really they're really also they're also really interested in uh, in improving the old old research and uh, make their the, the data at least like shareable and fair and. Uh, within their institutions, but really, it's 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 not something like we would do it. We would like to do it. We do it. No, it's it's really needs some extra ex expertise. So I guess one of the roles of the open science community is that to 
to, to spread the voice that doing open science really needs some solid backgrounds of technology or of, of uh, statistics. And uh, maybe we need more like more per permanent positions in, in these institutions that work in, in the open science uh, with the open science like practice and all with all these guidelines. I think, I think this, this is something I, I, I've observed in when, when I just uh, came back to China. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Um, do either of our other two speakers uh, want to address the, the question of perceived benefits or challenges of adopting open science practices for Chinese researchers? Sure, uh, Daniel, I, I have one point to make here is, uh, in, as, uh, as you already uh, uh, pointed out, there are actually a lot of uh, informatics uh, uh, resources already in China, especially in Chinese Academy of Sciences. And, um, but I think the, uh, the connection between the uh, national centers or national resources need to be, uh, to be smoothly you know, linked to the uh, local universities or also or those uh, hospitals. Uh, I think Vincent made, um, uh, made this uh, gap clear. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Wonderful. Well, with that, we will take a final look at the chat, make sure that we have all of the questions. We will record them uh, and we will talk about them in other platforms. Uh, I believe Yufang has also added links to the COSN Twitter, uh, the WeChat group that you guys use. Um, feel free to contact them directly. Uh, you can also contact uh, me at the Center for Open Science. My name is Daniel Steger. Um, you can find my contact information on our chat. Um, and we thank everyone for coming today. I feel like this is really informative. Uh, and the really beneficial thing about this is that Saturday we will be hosting the same webinar presentations uh, in this time within Chinese. So hopefully it will help us uh, reduce some of these language barriers that were talked about in depth today. Uh, thank you everyone thank you. for coming and we will uh, thank you again to our speakers and uh, we will close up here. Thank you everyone.